welcome to the link uh, this Wednesday this week. And we have had some good news. The lockdown has been eased up even a little more. And today we are speaking about one of the sectors that was most hit, tourism. And we're not going to focus on the airport as such, but we're going to focus on internal issues that need to be discussed, and specifically agro-tourism. And in the studio, my guest is uh, Miss Lily Ajarova. Some of you know her, Executive Director for Uganda Tourism Board. And she's here to explain to us agro-tourism. Lily, welcome. Thank you very much for having me. This animal called agro-tourism, agro mm -hmm. what are we talking about? Agrotourism is an establishment of an agricultural activity or mm. a farm for the purpose of receiving travelers f who come for either educational yeah. or recreational purpose. Okay. So if I have a farm, mm -hmm. it can become an agrotourist site. So, so site. Absolutely. There are a few things you'll need to yeah, do. Yeah, we're going to get to that in a moment. Yes. Why is it a big deal now for you, you uh, for UTB? It hasn't been that prominent, but now you are on it. Why? Why on it now? Well, the thing is that uh, Uganda Tourism Board is yeah. mandated by the Tourism Act 2008 mm. to work with the partners in diversifying tourism products. Okay. You, you know very well we have, for a long time, mm. we have been talking nature-based tourism mountain gorillas, chimpanzees, mm. the elephants, the lions, you know. We, we, we have reached a point where we need to diversify mm. our products and give more offerings to people uh, so that, one, for the reason that mm. we would want, um, especially for the international visitors, yes. so that they can have they can spend more time in the country mm -hmm. and spend more. But also for the Ugandans, yeah. as they travel to the different parts of the country, they can have different experiences, mm -hmm. which is different, say, for a family mm -hmm. that uh, have children who are born in the city of Kampala, they are schooling in Kampala, yeah. and they Everything they don't is know about the city. yes mm. it's about the city and uh, maybe they don't even have a farm they have never visited any farm yeah and this provides an opportunity to mm. educate the children to give them a recreation something totally different mm. that they're normally used to so as they leave Kampala and go say Tumbale, yeah. you know, or Tumbarara, mm. for that matter, mm. to visit a farm. Um, th their staying there will be enriching somebody. Mm. Yeah? So that is one of the importance of domestic tourism, okay. to try and create development across the country. Okay, and here we're talking about farms. So, a lady, somebody's listening and says, okay, my farm can become a tourist site. What does it take for a farm to qualify? Um, well, before we get there, yes. let me go back to your second question. Mm. You know, why, why agro-tourism now? Besides it being a UTB mandate, yeah. you know, in diversifying the tourism offerings. The other thing as well mm. is that um, um, just look at the combination of agriculture which is the biggest sector, yes, the most important sector yeah. in Uganda, in mm. Africa, even if we went at that level. Tourism is another very important sector. Mm. Um, for Uganda, it is the number one foreign exchange earner. Absolutely. So put the two together, mm. the two most important sectors. Isn't that the best equation to have? It's, it's a low-hanging fruit in my view, actually. Absolutely. Mm. And... Uh, you're having agro-tourism targeting the, the rural people, mm. yeah? Because it's majorly the rural people involved in agriculture. Yeah. And uh, you are increasing on their income, their livelihood. Mm. What more do we want? We are creating more jobs because on an, on an eco-tourism site, Besides the agricultural activity, mm. you need a guide, you know, to take around 
the visitors who come for educational purpose or and for, that's a job. for recreation. It's a job. Mm. And uh, depending on how big the facility is, it could be several jobs mm. on one farm. So this helps in creating jobs uh, for the rural community, but also we know that most of the people involved in, in agriculture are the youth, the women yeah. in the rural places, mm. and uh, trying to give them more to work with, adding value onto what they are doing already with agriculture, mm. I think is just going in the right direction. And before but our time runs out, you know, you know the link here, we give information so that people can turn around. Mm. I'm afraid time will run out. That's why I want us to tackle mm. this most important question. Why does, what does it take? I have a farm. I am watching lady here mm. saying, okay, we are UTB is on it. Who qualifies? What do I, how, do I do, how do I qualify if I have a farm, for instance? Yes, I could explain some factors, yes. but we are just trying to work on the guidelines mm. so that we can be able to publicize this and get everyone, every Ugandan who is interested in yes. this to be able to develop their farms for agro-tourism services. Mm. Uh, but some of the key things is this, this goes with the three principles mm. that agro-tourism facilities or sites normally have. One, there must be something to see. So what am I coming to see in your farm? Do you have something for me to see? Crops and animals. Fine. If you have that, there's something to see. Mm. Two, do you have something for me to do? Mm, good question. Yeah? Mm. You might have the animals and the crops. Do you have something for me to do? So I need to make sure there's... Because as a traveler, I'm coming for experience. Yeah? yeah? Mm. Yes, I must see, but I must experience. Mm. Yeah? Are you going to get me to name one of your cows? Are you going to get me to milk the cow? Mm. Are you going to you get mean. me to feed the rabbits? Mm. Yeah? So there has to be an experience for me. And then Deliberately three, prepared. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And then three, mm. there must be something for me to buy because I need to go with the memory as okay. a traveler. Mm. Yeah? So if you, those are the three principles mm. of agro-tourism um, sites. Okay. So if you have those three, uh, but of course also now we know with COVID, yeah. you know, uh, hygiene, yes. safety, 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 yes, safety yes, absolutely. health, safety has become the number one priority. Mm. So that adds on to some of the requirements among others as the key ones. And I guess you're going to be expanding this as we go uh, later on. Okay. How can I be helped to qualify? I know they, I heard about some intubation and all this. How uh, I am eager to, 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 to make some money. I have a farm and I want to do those things you have said. How can I be helped to qualify? Um, there's already a, a network of agro-tourism association in yeah. Uganda. They have 64 members okay. across the country. Mm. So that would be the starting point. Mm. And Uganda Tourism Board is willing to provide the information mm. of this network so that you can be able to reach out to them. But like I said, Uganda Tourism Board is coming up with the guidelines mm. so that we can regulate the standards you know, of all these facilities and the experiences that are going to be given to our visitors. Why is it a viable business option? I don't have money for a lodge like other people, but now I have a farm. Why should I come to agro-tourism? We are selling it, if you like. Why wouldn't you want to go? Mm. And uh, as the owner or as the visitor? As the owner. As the owner. Mm. This is uh, an additional revenue extreme for you. Yes. You don't necessarily need to have an accommodation mm. facility. Mm. Um, I think there has to be the understanding of what else do you have around you. Okay. Say if you have a national park close by, you have some other tourist attraction mm. close by that people are always visiting, position yourself to have it as an add-on. Oh, that makes sense, eh? Yeah, mm. and that to you as the owner of the farm mm. becomes an additional revenue stream that, you know, you're not even, e the investment is going to be more minimum, you know, compared to what you have already invested mm. in the farm itself. Mm. You need a very good guide, a skilled guide who okay. will do the right interpretation 
then you're good to go. But I can put accommodation. Absolutely, you can do that. Mm. I mean, if you even invest more by putting accommodation, you are giving it even a better experience. Mm. Because for me to go with my children and have a farm experience where we wake up in the morning, go feed rabbits or mm. go milk the cow, go and do some farming activities mm. and, you know, go see the bees, you know, the honey, the bees are making or harvest the honey, yeah. you know, and all that. Mm. For a weekend, and it is all, uh, we are not moving from one place to another and we have a full weekend mm. on the farm, it will be more convenient mm. and the more appre appreciated uh, for the traveler, for the visitor, for the tourist. Okay, thank you very much, uh, very much, Lily, for uh, selling agro-tourism. I am personally an enthusiast of uh, tourism in the whole, and I've visited farms, and what you're saying makes a lot of sense. Ugandans, you have farms in the villages. You have uh, tracts of land. You have a passion for agriculture. You can make extra money by doing what Lisa said, merging tourism with farming. But you must be able to uh, let that translate into something that can make you money, especially looking at tourism. Thank you very much for joining us. That was the link tonight.